investors and banks in mediation trying to stop foreclosures. Earlier this month, the government announced $40 million in loans to farmers in New South Wales and Queensland. That's on top of a drought assistance package that included $280 million worth of concessional loans to help people stay on their farms. But there's been criticism the money has been flowing too slowly. Barnaby Joyce is the Agriculture Minister and he joins me now. Uh, Senator Joyce, welcome to AM. Thanks for having me on your show, Michael. Uh, you're meeting a delegation of North Queensland cattle farmers next week. They say the, the banks have been too inflexible in dealing with loans and debt. What can you do about that? Well, obviously, we can have the negotiations with the bank. Uh, at least we're having a discussion about a program that we've, we've got out and a program that's through. Uh, we've made $280 million available at 4%. That sits on top of $420 million that was in the concessional farm finance scheme, which was at 4.5%. We've reallocated money in that concessional farm finance scheme, so it's more appropriately allocated to drought areas. We've put uh, $10 million on the table. Well, it's actually about $25 million on the table now for water infrastructure, $10 million for pests. Uh, we've received over 3,000 um, and 3, applications for farm household assistance, which gives about $900 to $1,000 a fortnight. I guess the problem is that it doesn't seem like it's enough. It's not getting to the right people at the right time. Ultimately, I, I understand this, and we are also discussing and have been discussing during the break how we can better streamline the process, and I'll be talking to the cattle farmers about precisely that. And I've also working closely with my colleague, uh, Maurice Payne, into how we uh, do a better job. And Maurice, to her credit, is having a crisis meeting and taking it to uh, Longreach to go straight to the areas of concern uh, to make sure that um, these these issues are dealt, uh, dealt with in a, a more um, efficacious manner. And so that goes to show that while the break is on, uh, we are at work. Uh, what is the danger that some of these people will have to ultimately have to leave their land? Well, the only thing that ultimately saves a drought is rain, and uh, we try our very best to, to mitigate the issues on the, on the way through. Um, if, it, if it doesn't rain, um, that's uh, yes, it, people go under immense financial stress. My job is to do my very best to try and keep them on the land, but I'm doing it with the current budget constraints that obviously occupy so much of the rest of your program. The, the fact is that when... The only money we have is borrowed money. It's a lot harder game than doing it with money that you got in the bank. And uh, but we will, and continue to do th- to, to do the very best we can. And I've had discussions, uh, informal discussions with the treasurer, with Joe Hockey, uh, the last at our last cabinet meeting, and he, he expressed his interest that he wants to, uh, you know, have a, a greater see of exactly what's going on, and I've clearly explained there are certain areas. So there could be extra money you're talking about. <clears throat> well, you never make a promise until you can uh, deliver on it. You, you go through a process and uh, see what you can do. But what I've always explained to my colleagues is, although the drought has broken in so much of Australia, there are certain pockets, and it's predominantly between the Gulf right down to Walgett in New South Wales, where it, they haven't had enough rain, or even if they've got a little bit of rain, it's of no use because the, the crop is dead or the cattle aren't there. Okay, well, these, this all adds to the uh, the general pressure that people in, in rural Australia are, are, are facing, and a lot of that's due to the budget. Uh, Labor's Joel Fitzgibbon, for instance, says he's been travelling around the country, and he says, this is he says this morning, he's never seen such anger toward a government from people who've supported the coalition all of their lives. The government is in real trouble in the bush, is he right? I can understand. The, well, first of all, I'd you know, like to... Congratulate Joel for getting around. That's that's good for a Labor Party minister. That's the first time that's, that that's happened. But uh, the the next thing I'd say is that what I was given from the Labor government was a program that wasn't signed off by all the states. There was no exceptional circumstances. They've got rid of that. There was no actual drought policy. So I was given nothing to work with. So it's very well for people to complain about something when they actually delivered nothing for us at the start. I, the the farm household. The interim farm household allowance that they had was one that no one could access because everybody was basically knocked out or very, very few could access. I think the point he's making is about broader budget measures that are hitting reg- rural and regional Australia hard. Well, he's uh, right in that regard, isn't he? Well, that's the discussion that is obviously part of the, you know, part of the political discussion. I'm not going to say for one second that is if you're trying to turn the finances of our nation around there are going to be hard decisions that are made. Right. And if we don't, we go broke. Well, let's have a look at some of the specifics, particularly the, the GP co-payment, which uh, Senator MacDonald says is uh, is dangerous. Um, the university fees, uh, which many regional universities say is going to force up university prices and uh, adversely affect regional Australians wanting to go to university. Well, we, this is the, the, the problem that we're always going to have. No matter what you do, if you try, as a little old Bush accountant talking here, if you try to turn around the finances of a family or a business or a nation, you're not going to do it without actually making changes. Uh, if we don't turn it around, then that is just 
basically been completely and utterly irresponsible because in five or 10 or 15 years' time, uh, this the chickens will come home to roost and we'll be closing down hospitals. We won't have an ABC. We won't be able to defend ourselves because we will have run out of money. Now, we've got it. The only way you can fix it is fix it early. This is our first budget. I understand the concerns people have. I fully understand them. But what is our alternative? We, we either accept that we've got a debt problem and we've got to turn it around or we basically say, no, there's only a small melanoma on our arm and if we just wait long enough, it'll go away. No, as a, as a financial melanoma, it will kill you. Do you concede that the budget hasn't been sold effectively up to this point? <clears throat> it's, it's very hard to sell anything when people are saying, well, that's a cut. But is it helpful for the government to be threatening more budget cuts and tax hikes while you're trying to get the crossbenchers to support your budget? Well, you've got to, you either believe that you have an issue with the finances of the nation that has to be fixed, or you don't. And now if you do, it's, it's not going to happen by some sort of form of financial miracle. It's going to happen by actual decisions that bring in more money. Now, no matter where you go, Michael, it, you're going to find someone who's unhappy about that. You can't reduce the amount of money that's going out there without the person who's receiving it being unhappy about it. Are you confident uh, eventually you're going to get all these things through? Well, we give it a, you, you just, you can't, you do your very best job. But what I can say is I, I feel that, you know, the Greens and the Labor Party have basically, as I say, working as a block, but the Greens most uh, especially, they're making themselves politically impotent uh, because all the dealing is being done by the parties. And uh, I suppose congratulations to them. But when the Greens come out with just a carte blanche, we're going to say no, that means that you've just said yes, that you're irrelevant, that okay. there, there's no purpose to you. All right, Senator Joyce, thanks very much for joining us.